Hey NorCal Carters, this is Jason. I'm back with a basic video on brake discs. And mainly this is for the sizing and the measurement. Again, this is a basic video. This is geared towards the new guy that just has no experience with carting. And if you're a local cart shop, please do yourself a favor. Start posting on the various marketplaces such as Facebook or, or Craigslist and start getting some of these questions in to your shop that people are looking for and kind of reacquaint yourself what it was like to be in carting your first year and how hard it was to find information. And again, that's what these videos are for. They're going to be very basic. I'm going to try to keep them somewhat short, but that way the new guy that just bought that new cart or new to him cart off Craigslist or another marketplace and they, they don't even know how to measure the brake rotor or where to start. That's what this video is about. So first, for this video, we're going to use a digital caliper. If you are going to be working on your own equipment, you need to have one of these in your toolbox. I actually have a couple spread out throughout uh, my shop and my track toolbox, etc. Now you don't need a real expensive one if you're not working on engines. So if you're doing engine work, that's a different conversation. That's not for this video. But if you're doing basic chassis stuff, you can find these digital calipers for 20, 30, 40 bucks for uh, a decent uh, economy priced one. So you must have these if you're going to work on your cart. Digital caliper. Also, if you're going to work on your cart, tape measure. And I got a little bit of a glare there, so I apologize. This one's is inches and metric. And most of the carts that we're dealing with are going to be metric. Some are going to be inches. Some are going to be both. So you want to make sure your digital caliper and your tape measure can do millimeter and standard or inches in metric. So there you have it. Now back to the brake video. So the reason I'm doing this video is I buy and sell a lot of stuff on the different marketplaces and a lot of times it's to the new guy who may never actually even race. But they just want to cart, they just want to go out to the track in the middle of the week and just go practice and have fun and that's it. But there's not a lot of information for that brand new guy to find. So that's what this video is for. If you appreciate our information, consider a donation to NorCal Carters. You can go to NorCalCarters.com or we also accept PayPal and you could go to PayPal.me as in M-E forward slash NorCal Carters and uh, everything helps and you know again as we have more funding the videos will get better the production will get better uh, we'll do more and more content as we can so brake discs step one evaluate what you have for a brake disc and sometimes this is the hardest part in fact I am personally looking at one particular brake disc it might be off an ITEL cart but I'm not a hundred percent sure um, but you want to determine what you have for a brake disc. So the easiest thing is to grab your tape measure and you want to measure the outside diameter. And when measuring, you'll notice how I'm doing a sweeping motion. If you have a circle, it doesn't matter where you start. So what I do is I start with a sweeping motion. I'm going to do this one in metric. And you do a sweeping motion until you get the largest number possible then it will start decreasing again. So in this example, you can see how my sweeping motion takes me out to 200 millimeters. So we can safely say this is a 200 millimeter diameter brake rotor. That's very important because if you're calling your local card shop and you say, hey, you got a brake rotor? They're going to say, what kind? And you're going to say, I don't know. And the guy on the other end is going, you know what? Send me pictures or I don't got time for this. And they're not trying to be rude, but with all the different combinations of brake rotors and options, we can't sit there and guess what you might have. So these are some steps you can do ahead of time. So we determine this 200 millimeter diameter. Oh, I'm not even in focus. So 200 millimeter diameter. Give me one second. See that? Boom. Next, you want to determine is it a vented or a solid rotor? And in this situation, this is a vented rotor. And we have a measurement of 
10 millimeters. So I only used the tape measure because I already had it in my hand. And the digital caliper I had wouldn't measure all the way across to 200 millimeter. So you could also do the tape measure for the diameter. And then you could do the digital caliper. Make sure it is zeroed out. And you can verify the measurement. So we're getting 10.12. Ten point one two, ten point two five. So we can make the assumption that this is a ten millimeter thick vented rotor. The other thing you'll need to know: the mounting bolts. Now, I'm not gonna lie; I'm not actually sure what this is off of. I think it's an ITEL cart. Not a hundred percent sure, but it's a. It looks like to a floating rotor of some sort where this part goes into the hub and some pins go through to secure it. Now, you need to tell the shop or whoever you're buying your parts from, my bolt pattern is, in this situation, you go from bolt hole to bolt hole and you want to go from center to center. And in this situation it is, and these are just rough numbers, 90. So 90 millimeters center to center on the mounting holes. So in this situation, again, I think this is a floating brake rotor, maybe for an ITAL cart, 90 millimeters, there's three mounting points, okay? Then you have this other style, more like a CRG style floating brake rotor. How do I know this is a floating brake rotor? I'll show you in a minute, but typically the holes here are much larger. And then you have pins and rivets that go through, so a pin, and it has a couple of caps with some sur clips, and that's what keeps everything nice and solid on the hub itself. So you want to know what type of mounting you have. And in this small little brake rotor, this is actually a rear disc brake rotor for a cadet or a kid cart. And you measure the axle size. So this one's measuring... 25 millimeter, so that's a 25 millimeter axle. It has three mounting bolts, and in this case, the bolts are actually fixed to the hub. This is not a floating setup. And if you measure the hubs, not the hub, the, the holes, this one, this is not going to be the most accurate just because it's I'm not actually on the hole. 70 millimeter. So we can say that we have three mounting points and they're spaced at 70 millimeters apart. And then on this one being that's a cadet, we didn't measure this one earlier. So this one you're looking at. One fifty eight. 158 on that particular one. So again, very basic video, just brake discs. And what prompted this was someone was looking for a brake disc on uh, Facebook. And I asked them what size they didn't know. I said, okay, bear with me. Let me do a video. That was last weekend and here we are a week later, but at least I'm trying to do something here. So this is a brake disc hub. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, six mounting points. This is a very common size and a very common pattern. And so we got 63 outside to outside. We don't want that. We want center to center. So this one is approximately 57. That's kind of an odd number. 57 from center to center on the mounting points. So again, that's where the digital caliper comes in handy. You just want rough numbers. If you're using a yardstick or your thumb and you're calling a shop asking, oh, it's about, uh, it's about an eighth. In our world, about an eighth is just not good enough. We need to be within a millimeter or two uh, to, to get you the right part. So that's, that's the fun part. Now, if you don't have the brake disc available, you kind of have to do everything backwards. Hopefully you have a hub 
and you have the mounting point, that would be a good starting. If you don't have any of that, then a lot of times, a lot of the hubs and brake rotors are interchangeable as long as you know the diameter and the width and the axle size. So for example, this is a 50 millimeter axle. So let's say you don't have a hub or a brake disc. You could call your local car shop and you can say, hey, Joe Bob or whoever the guy is at your local shop, I have a 50 millimeter axle. I am missing my brake disc and I'm missing the hub. Do you have something in stock? And Joe Bob's gonna go, yes I do. What, what size brake disc? And you can say, well, I'm not quite sure but when I measure from my mounted caliper, it needs to be mounted, and I don't have this in front of you, but you're gonna have to visualize here a little bit. If you measure from your mounted caliper to the center line of the axle, you could probably get a pretty good idea of what the diameter of the rotor needs to be. And then you could also probably get a pretty good idea if you were to take your, your new purchased digital calipers and measure the width of the brake pads. And let's say it's 15 millimeter. And then that's going to give that cart shop an idea of like what size you might need. And when you're going to the caliper to the axle, so center line of the axle to the caliper, what you want to do is you want to go out as far as you can until you can visualize where the rotor might actually hit the caliper uh, or some securing hardware. So it's, I don't have that video right now, so it's, it's hard to visualize, but that's how you would do it. And again, most carts are going to be metric. So keep in mind, you may have to do two sets of measurements in metric and in standard. So that way the cart shop can really fine tune and, and get the right information from you. So again, quick video from NorCal Carters on brake discs, the measurements, etc. If you found this video helpful, again, please consider a donation. Please share the videos, like our YouTube page, and, um, and we'll just keep rolling with these. And again, these are just very basic videos. Thank you.